Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Uh, I'm here to talk about C-section rates, but I've titled my talk Building Trustworthy Systems for Childbirth because at this moment, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has divided the entire world into people who can protect themselves and people who cannot. And this is true across geopolitical borders, but it is equally true just across neighborhood blocks in the same city. And it's true from one childbirth facility to the next. And what I want to think with you about today is how we can make trust not a virtue that separates good people and bad people, but an output of systems that are either functioning or not functioning. I direct a research and social impact program called the Delivery Decisions Initiative at Harvard University. And our vision is a world in which every person can choose to grow their family with dignity. The reason that we have this vision statement is because nearly every societal injustice shows up in the well-being of mothers, from structural racism to gender inequity to ge geographic inequities. And uh, for that reason, the well-being of mothers is a bellwether for the well-being of all of us. If mothers are unwell, society in general is unwell. There are many indicators that that is true, but C-section rates are probably one of the leading indicators. And the reason is that the decision to do a C-section is probably one of the most common and consequential surgical errors in the world. Cesareans can be life-saving. They're designed to be rescues. But we've seen across the world that it is either underused or in many cases overused. In the United States, from the early 1970s until now, C-sections have become 500% more common without a clear explanation. It's not well explained by the demographic characteristics of American mothers. It's not well explained by medical malpractice or by payment policies or even uh, the preferences of the people giving birth. And for that 500% increase, term infants are 0% better off. And an American mother today is actually 50% more likely to die in childbirth than her own mother was and three to four times more likely to die if she's black than if she's white. Um, so a few years ago, my team and I started to investigate how this could be the case. And one of the principles that we came to believe along the way is that C-section rates mean different things depending on whether you are talking about an individual obstetrician, a whole healthcare facility, or a country. But at the hospital level, at the facility level, what C-sections reflect is something about the quality of labor management. And this is because in most facilities, the goal may not necessarily be to decrease C-section rates, but it is always to try to get as many uncomplicated vaginal deliveries as possible. And the way that you do that is by supporting people in labor. So I think it is a fair statement that if a facility has a very high C-section rate, they are less committed or less good to supporting people in labor. This is a graph that shows the differences in C-section rates by facility in the United States. And what you see is C-section rates vary from 7% to 70%, depending on which hospital you go to. And then after you account for the risk of the population that's being served and you only look at low risk uh, uh, people, uh, you don't see tenfold variation, you see 15-fold variation, which means the biggest risk factor for one of the most common surgeries we do is which hospital a person goes to. Now, the reasons for this are um, both incredibly intuitive and not, because it turns out that very little explains this variation. But one of the things that my team and I did is we visited childbirth facilities across the country and in some cases across the world uh, to try to see what was happening on labor and delivery units. And one of the things that is quite clear is that when taking care of somebody in labor, uh, there's often a choice, a dichotomous choice between doing the right thing and doing the easy thing. And so often the right thing and the easy thing do not line up. Um, in this case, it takes more work to support somebody in labor uh, for the length of time that it takes for somebody to have a successful vaginal delivery than to simply do the C-section. And so there's constant pressure in the system to simply do the C-section. This is some data that we collected from a city uh, called Philadelphia, where um, in the 1990s, about half of the labor and delivery units closed, which, and the population size didn't change, which meant the remaining hospitals became twice as busy. And what you're seeing is how the busyness of a facility, the number of people who are simultaneously in labor impacts what happens. So on the x-axis of all of these graphs is the number of people who are simultaneously in labor. And on the y-axis is an odds ratio. 
And what you see in the top panel is the busier the facility is, the more likely it is that the facility will do a procedure that's designed to speed up the process, like a C-section. And in the bottom panel, it shows you that the busier the hospital is, the more likely it is that somebody will get hurt, either suffer an infection or a hemorrhage or some other complication. So that raises the question of what do we do about that? And many ideas work in theory, but very few are designed for practice. So as we were thinking about what, what a potential solution may look like, it was really important for us uh, to use this principle of simplicity and also to think about the role of teamwork. Now, simplicity does not mean simple. What we mean by simplicity is trying to correct the situation where there's a choice between doing the right thing and the easy thing. In the ideal, simple situation, um, the right thing and the easy thing are the same thing. And then this principle of teamwork, it turns out that uh, childbirth is inherently a team sport, but the team that comes together to take care of somebody in labor comes together randomly for every person, every time, everywhere in the world. And the person in labor is the central member of that team. And so what we need is a mechanism to make sure that the knowledge in every person's head, the person uh, assisting uh, and the person um, in labor uh, can be shared in a systematic way. Uh, so what we did is we designed a labor and delivery planning board. Um, this is a dry erase whiteboard that uh, is a version of what already exists in many uh, birthing rooms. And it's large and, uh, and it's simplified so that everybody in the room, including and especially the person in labor, can see it and understand it. So there's a place where you write down the name of every member of the team, starting with the person in labor herself. Uh, and that is so not only you know people's names, but so that um, everybody feels they have both the knowledge or both the uh, opportunity um, uh, and permission to speak. Um, there's a place where you write down the preferences, only the things that the person in labor can tell you. There's a place where you write down the plan. And then there's a place where you write down the next time the team will come back together again and talk. Um, and this doesn't have to be a specific time. It can just be a window of time. Uh, but what it does is it creates alignment and shared expectations among the whole team. This very, very simple idea is something that we actually tested in a clinical trial across the United States on both coasts and right in the middle of the country in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And what we found is that uh, overwhelmingly, um, people giving birth really, really appreciated this. And as a result of using the solution, which we call team birth, almost all felt they had the role that they wanted in the decisions about their labor. Um, they felt like they had a good understanding of what was happening to them, and they believed their preferences made a difference. We also found that the more conversations that took place around this whiteboard, which we called huddles, the more likely it was that any of these things were true. So there was a dose-response effect. The more exposure to these kinds of structured conversations, the more likely it was that people had the role that they wanted, that they understood what was happening to them, and that they felt like their input made a difference. Uh, clinicians also seem to really like this. Um, clinicians generally don't like it when we change processes or tell them what to do. But in this case, 90% would recommend this approach because they felt that by, through empowering the patient, uh, it actually recovered some efficiency uh, in terms of communication for them. The overwhelming majority also believe that it improved their care and that it helped clarify their own decision-making uh, over cesarean deliveries and non-urgent situations. Um, we also found that requiring or, you know, putting a process in place for this type of communication was safe. So nobody got hurt. In fact, what we saw was cesarean rates went down. And in some cases, we even saw improvements in severe maternal morbidity and unexpected newborn complications. And uh, part of what we see here is that I think for a long time, people's experience of care has been treated as a secondary luxury that we get to after we make them safe. And what we found uh, through this project and what appears to be true in nearly every story of a maternal mortality is that uh, actually experience may be a way of making people safe. Attending to people's lived and embodied experience is a way of making sure that they're heard and ultimately a way of making better decisions. So um, that's what I came here to say. And I think I just want to leave you with this final thought, which is that people have greater needs than to emerge from hospitals unscathed. Survival is the floor. And often what we do is we congratulate ourselves when people don't get hurt. But if we're trying to build a better system and a more trustworthy system, we should really be aiming for the ceiling, uh, which is care that's not just safe, but care that provides dignity as well. Thank you so much.